Back in 2021, when BlizzCon Line came around and it was announced that Overwatch 2 was going to go from a 6v6 format to a 5v5 format, there was shock and awe in the community. Many people, including myself, being very, very upset and frustrated that the game was switching formats because we felt like the game's issues were not format issues, but abandonment and balancing issues. And a lot of people came to what I ended up believing to be premature conclusions about 5v5, comparing it to Call of Duty and saying this is just going to be Call of Duty, it's not going to be Overwatch anymore. To a long list of things, while I wasn't too excited about 5v5, I came to the conclusion that we really needed to wait and see how it played out. And now, we're about a year into Overwatch 2's lifespan, and it's time to make that assessment. Do we think that 5v5 was better for the game than 6v6? And I'm here to tell you that I think it was not. I think that 6v6 was better for Overwatch than 5v5 ever will be. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain why I think that is. And now, before I really get into it, I do wanna say my intention of this video is not to make some big push for 6v6 to come back or to ridicule the developers for making the change to 5v5. I simply like talking about these ideas and I just wanted to put my thoughts out there after taking a little bit of a break from Overwatch and really being able to reflect on the changes that came to the game and, and being able to take a step back to see the big picture. I feel like I have a good idea of where my heart and thoughts lie with this. So, you know, this is just my opinion. However, I will be referencing some things that are objective truths as to how the game has changed. Feel free to comment yours below and tell me, do you miss 6v6 or do you prefer 5v5 and why? As long as you're respectful in the comments to each other and you keep the debate healthy, I'm always happy to read new ideas and hear what people have to say. Now, without waiting any longer, let's get right into the video today. Overwatch 2, 6v6 for 5v5. You know my answer. Here is my argument for why 6v6 was better for the game. Let's start out with the most obvious role here that was affected, that being the tank role. Obviously, removing one tank from the game ends up being a very big deal. If you're an off-tank player like me, your role, frankly, was almost removed from the game entirely, right? So a lot of these tanks that were functioned as off-tanks in 6v6 lost a lot of their playstyles or ability to be played, and frankly, some of these heroes weren't designed at all to be heroes in 5v5. Some of the obvious ones that come to mind are heroes like Roadhog, who clearly don't fit the de tank design model, that the Overwatch 2 tanks need if you're going to be a solo tank. Hog always functioned as an off tank, and I've said this for years that I think Hog, believe it or not, functioned as a tank in open queue better than in roll queue. I, I almost argue that Hog shouldn't have even been a tank in roll queue because it, it was very difficult for him to fit the role. Like He, he best fit the game when you had a, somebody like a flex support like Jay Jonak, for example. In the Overwatch League, flexing off of support or one of your damage heroes to solo heal and play a third tank on maps like Junkertown. That was Hog's niche in the game, though we went to roll queue and uh, he lost that role, which is a, a topic for another discussion. But, you know, th that model still stands. Where in 5v5, Hog just frankly doesn't really fit well as a tank. And if you're a Hog player, sometimes it doesn't matter how good you are. If you don't have a tank that can soak up incoming damage for the rest of your team, no matter what you do or how good you are at Roadhog, your ability to get value has gone down, right? And that's a formatting issue caused by 5v5. The same could be said for Wrecking Ball. Yidl actually just recently mentioned this in his video that he, you know, to, I'll link it down in the description. It's a, a very good video where he talks about why he doesn't play Ball as much anymore. And that's because what Ball brought to the table and what made him unique as a tank was his ability to disrupt and kind of flank in the back lines and go contest snipers and back line and be a nuisance. However, if you do that and attempt to play that way in Overwatch 2 when there's only one tank and you don't have another tank to actually hold the space for you and hold the front line of your team together like glue, well, your team just falls apart. So your ability to play the hero in that manner has now been removed from the game and make, making the game much more one-dimensional and boring for tank players. The same can be said for Zarya, a hero I loved playing as an off-tank that I would always queue quick play with and play no matter what my tank combo was. I would duo with Nathan and we'd play Zarya Hog and because we could synergize our bubbles together with his take a breather, we could play really, really silly comps like that and you know still have fun, diverse ways to play Overwatch. And now, to be frank, I don't find myself queuing tank at all. I never queue tank anymore unless I want to play Doomfist, who I also would have loved to have played as an off tank. I think a hero like Doomfist would play better and be more fun to play if he had another tank to synergize with, whether it be playing him in the brawl or playing him in dive. He would have been one of the more versatile tanks to play in the game, but ever since his slow was removed and the support creep has started to happen, which I will talk about more momentarily, I find Doom 
incredibly unfun to play, and I would have frankly loved to have played him as an off tank. The same goes for heroes like Junker Queen, who I actually did play her as an off tank in 6v6 customs in a custom lobby, and it was some of the most fun I had ever playing Overwatch, right? That option is not in the game at all anymore. It, it drastically reduced what tanks, how tanks were able to play, and the amount of separate play styles you could potentially have as a tank player got cut in half. And I am not going to sit here and argue to you that less is more. That's a very, very silly argument. The reality is that the that the the amount of ways that you could play these tanks and how diverse setting up with two tanks are, like in in, in the game compared to now. That was had so much higher of a skill ceiling, right? Because of, it, for example, like if there's two variables versus two variables, the amount of options for things that can happen are exponentially more, right? Rather than if it's just one versus one. That's just, you know, basic, I guess you could say math. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but feel free to articulate that better for me or elaborate on that better in the comment section. But you guys get what I mean. Less is not more. Your options are way less. And I heard Flat say something like this about him playing against Emong the other day on Tank. It's like, we're just kind of standing there shooting at each other. And it's just really boring and one-dimensional. But with two tanks on the field, that wouldn't be the case because the amount of space you could take and what you were accountable for was much, much less individually and allowed you to expand on these playstyles and do much more than previously what was previously allowed. But aside from that, let's take a look at if you're just a specialist player in the tank role, right? And you're only really good at one or two tanks, which is what most players in Overwatch are. This is true for any role. If, uh, how, how heroes get picked in Overwatch is generally there's two or three heroes who compete for one spot on the roster, right? So say that you are a Echo player, right? If I've picked Echo, I'm competing for that DPS spot with either arguably Farah. Hanzo, if we're playing poke, there's like a limited amount of characters that based on what my comp means, or if it's a dive character, maybe Genji, that I can fill into that. The same was true for Zarya in Overwatch 1, right? You were filling the off-tank role, and in order to be picked as an off-tank, you were competing with D.Va for that spot, maybe Sigma, maybe Wrecking Ball, right? But there were only like two or three characters, depending on the comp you were playing, that you were quote-unquote competing with that would have been competitive picks for that spot. If there's only one spot available, say you only play two, two or three tanks, now, instead of just competing for one or two characters for that spot, and this is only going to get worse as time goes on, you now are competing with the entire tank roster for that spot. So if the meta ends up being like what it is now, where Orisa is just literally unkillable, right? If you play, maybe if you're a casual Reinhardt player or a casual Zarya player, whatever it may be, Good luck picking your hero in a remotely serious environment because now you're competing with nine other characters for that spot. So if you're like me and you're like, well, you know, not, not everyone can be an expert in the game. Like I, I can play all these heroes, right? Like, you know, I've spent thousands of hours grinding this game, but say you're just like a casual player. You're not going to sit there and want to learn 10 tanks just to be able to play what you need to play. Like, I want to play what I'd like to play. And because there's one last spot there, there's way less of a chance for you to actually succeed depending on the meta for that tank or depending on what's good. The odds of you being able to pick that are, are, are way lower and it's much more difficult to get into. I don't think that's better, right? Like, there's a reason why I don't play the role at all. And if the meta goes against it, well, good luck, have fun, especially if you're a high rank player. And I know that's not a big issue for a lot of you lower rank players, but that's not better for the game. What made Overwatch so interesting was how diverse the picks were and how you could pick a lot of different things in a lot of different situ situations. And when the game and the metas in the game became too one-dimensional, one like Double Shield did, people didn't like it, right? And, you know, there were fun metas and there were, there were bad ones. Like, you know, the issue was usually how long they lasted in Overwatch 1, but now that picking for that spot becomes so much more competitive that if you only like one or two of the heroes, uh, you're just not going to play the role. And I've stopped playing the role entirely for that reason. Which brings up the argument of counter swapping and how now it almost seems like you're constantly counter swapping because there's not nearly as much flexibility since there's only one spot or one role, right? You don't have another tank to help cover your character's weaknesses. For example, Zarya, she had her self bubble and she would just explode if like there was no shield in front of her, right? Which is why they had to make give her the ability to bubble herself twice, which I'll talk about a little bit later in making these tanks quote unquote super tank versions of themselves. You could play Reinhardt to synergize with that or Winston to synergize with that so that those main tanks 
went, worked well with Zarya because they were able to take space with her bubble and help mitigate the risk for her not having super mobility and having a lower health pool, but she had a lot of damage. And they, they helped cover that tank's weakness. That no longer is in the game. So now there's all these counter swapping you know there's a lot of counter swapping going on unless it's like Arissa who's literally unkillable right now right for for meta tanks and it just makes the game really rock paper scissorsy and boring it doesn't it doesn't have depth it lacks depth and that's the big point that I'm going to be talking about when I make about 5v5 it's just the game lost a lot of its depth especially on the front front line side of things so let's move on from the tank aspects of what tank kind of lost in in 5v5 going to 5v5 let's let's talk about snipers right snipers in 5v5 became unbelievably oppressive and unfun to play against right widowmaker eating top 500 right now is absolutely miserable to play against even more so than overwatch one while she might not be the hard meta character in pro play now if you're not playing the tank and and hard marking the widow because how snipers were dealt with in overwatch one is you just pick these tanky tanky tanks that can either shield or dive and because there was tanks were able to hold more space on the maps right Snipers weren't able to get as consistent value because they weren't able to be able to, to front line and be in spots where they could get kills as often. Like it was much easier for a team to zone out a sniper from its area of being a threat with two tanks than one. So now I literally am a somber main because if you don't play Widowmaker in ranked, which is the easiest way to answer Widow, you have to chase her around the map as a character like Sombra. And just from all these, you know, GM hit scans, picking Widowmaker, who's had to be nerfed and still is running rampant, Hanzo had to get nerfed too, Sojourn had to get nerfed. We're in season six, and three out of these, three of these seasons, maybe more, I, st I still think Widow's incredibly oppressive on a lot of these maps. The snipers just sit in the back of the map and just have a field day, like a fish in a barrel. And even if they're not having a field day, like there was one game where. I played against Jay and Nick 2K, and there's nothing against them, obviously, but, you know, like, Nick 2K was negative most of the game, swapped to Widowmaker, and just sat at a range where we couldn't duel him, and I had to play Sombra and mark him for, like, three or four fights, and now, as a DPS player, I cannot play the character that I want to because it has to be me to go on this Widowmaker, or she will be free shooting my team the entire game, right? That wasn't as nearly as much of a problem in Overwatch 1 because of how spacing works. So now you either have to hard, drastically nerf these snipers, make massive balance changes to the game, something that Blizzard is infamously bad at, right? Just to address the lack of an extra tank on the field, right? And, and now playing damage against that is so one-dimensional, again, lacks depth that I just don't find it as fun. Like, I'm forced to swap to Sombra, and then guess what happens after they swap to Sombra? If I die the Widow with all the immortality abilities that supports have been given, she's just gonna get teleported on by a Kiriko and become immortal. Life gripped away by a Weaver. Oh, next life, you're on Sombra? Well, because the 25% ult charge thing, which is, this might not be a 5v5 thing, this is a, a game fundamental design thing, I guess. Now, they're just gonna swap to Torb if they get bored, and now I'm stuck on Sombra, and they're on Torbjorn now, and I'm gonna swap back, and then they're just gonna swap back to Widow. It's, it's like, so connect four that it's just I, I don't enjoy doing it as a dps player that's that's ruined my experience as a dps player made it drastically worse compared to playing the characters that i generally two or three really just want to play so the snipers became rampant have all still had to be continuously nerfed throughout 5v5's lifespan right let's talk about the ability to actually like solo dual characters right because these tanks had to become super tanks the characters that you can actually find in duel on the map and have a chance at killing like the opportunity to win those one-on-ones has gone way down unless you have massive amounts of burst damage right meaning these burst damage heroes have just really started to shine on the game right and th th this is even like let's not even talk about the immortalities that support has let's, let's look at an example right and this is this is what i mean by this right if you're a soldier 76 dueling azaria in overwatch one she's got one bubble for herself and 400 hp right in overwatch 2 that Zarya now has two bubbles for herself and 475 HP. The odds of you being able to win that 1v1 as a DPS, right, have gone down significantly. The same goes for D.Va, right? In D.Va, in Overwatch 1, Soldier versus D.Va, like the D.Va had to be smart about her timing with her matrix. She had to use her fly right because she only had that two, two and a half second matrix and maybe 600 HP, right? But in Overwatch 2, she's got, what, 650 HP, 350 armor, and a four-second matrix, right? 
the ability for the duel to go in the, to the smarter player, regardless of the role, has been diminished. Because now it's not so much about the decisions you make, because there's only one tank. Each of these tanks have had to be, had their stats boosted to an, like, a point where it doesn't matter if they're making mistakes, like their margin for error in a one-on-one -on -one is much smaller. Now, it's not always true for like the bigger aspects of the game. You've had to see so many more supports get insane amounts of healing. Now, the big talk in the community is, well, we should nerf healing across the board. Well, when healing wasn't nerfed across the board and like if the healing wasn't strong, the solo tank would just get absolutely lambasted depending on what the hero was. That's caused by 5v5 because there wasn't another off tank or a second tank to offset that damage going to the first tank. We had to, you know, let's talk about CC now. Aside from th that 1v1 scenario, which you should think about because those 1v1s happened all the time in Overwatch 1, making it less fair and less based on the player's actual skill, which means it's less healthy for the game because it should be about how you play, not what you pick. That's what made Overwatch so beautiful. There were all these diverse ways to play the game and all these characters that did different things, but you could get good at all of them and it didn't really matter too much what you picked, but you had a good chance of winning if you played it right. And you saw that happen less and less in Overwatch 1's lifespan when gimmicky uh, immortality abilities and double shields started coming in, right? But... Let's look at the CC that they've started to add back into the game, right? Gradually, they've said they want to add more CC. You've seen Cast Hinder Nade come up. You've seen Honest Sleep Dart get nerfed in 5v5 because it was too oppressive on tanks and only tanks, right? Well, this CC is starting to be added back into the game because you didn't need to remove all of it. It was just the obnoxious ones that had all this other crazy utility on top of it. Well, now we're in 5v5. And that tank still isn't going to have another tank to help him. So what have we continued to add to the game to help these tanks get in trouble? There's only one thing you can add. That's crazy, insanely overpowered support get out of jail free cards. Suzu. Life Grip. Right? Now, Alari is the first support that hasn't had any of those, but her heal drone's insane. Right? And I'm not even going to begin to talk about mobility creep. I'll let Yeedle's video kind of handle that. But mobility creep in 5v5, how these heroes are being designed, they all have mobility abilities too. I'm not going to talk about that too much, but especially the supports. So you've seen supports get buffed out the wazoo to compete and compensate for the lack of that tank because that's all you can do in 5v5. So now we're in a meta where things are constantly immortal and it's just like double shield. I spent today playing, I'm shooting an Immortal Orisa that has tank cooldowns that are so powerful that you cannot pierce it no matter what. And even if you get her low, the Life Weaver is going to life grip them across the map. They're going to get Suzu'd. They're going to get Immortality Field. And all of these supports that have been buffed so much that support Q times and top 500 Grandmaster 1 across the board are exponentially higher than tank and damage. Support queue times range from 10 to 20 plus minutes, while DPS are instant. Because support has had to be buffed so much because of the lack of a second tank to help zone and force things off, right? That it's just become such a dominant role that it's diminished the experience for playing tank and DPS. So this support creep that's happened yet again has been caused because of the lack of a tank. Because these supports don't have the MO abilities and the other supports are continuing to get more and more busted abilities. It's the only option because you can't buff these tanks anymore. And if you do, they become like Orisa, who's just unkillable. The game because more, becomes more and more rock, paper, scissors and loses its depth because of the tuning that has to happen to make sure that one tank can actually work in, the, in an environment where all these characters were initially designed for 6v6. Where does this creep stop? How does it stop? I don't know if it does, right? So now you've had supports just get buffed out the wazoo. The queue times are lopsided still, right? Because now the support queue times are, are really, really long. Where does this leave you, right? And these are all things that were caused because of the change for 5v5 and remove it, the removal of a tank. Now, I think that's all I'd like to say about 5v5 for now. You have less options and ways to play these characters it, as a tank, right? Some of these heroes very clearly were not designed for 5v5 environments. The counter swapping is really annoying. Snipers became oppressive, right? And now in the game, it seems like because everything is so tuned up, you need excessive burst damage, just like in double shield. It's the same problem, right? You lose your ability to really duel in one-on-ones. You just kind of get floored by a tank if you ever end up in a 1v1 with a tank, which wasn't always the case aside from double shield. 
and now supports have been buffed out the wazoo. That's kind of my brief recap. Let's talk about the shortcomings of 6v6 and address that side of the argument. Obviously, the most glaring issues of 6v6 were things like Double Shield. Let's address Double Shield. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Samito, you hated Double Shield more than anyone. How could you possibly advocate for 6v6 over 5v5? And that is because Double Shield's issues were game balance issues, not formatting issues. The Blizzard team abandoned Overwatch 1 and never sat down and actually attempted to fix what caused double shield. And I'm going to reference Yeetle's cycle of comp city. I'm talking about Yeetle a lot today. He's got good Overwatch takes, right? What happens when you give the bunker poke tanks, the, the tanks that have the most range in the game from the tank roll, the most range damage in the game, and the strongest barriers in the game, the best sustain brawl abilities in the entire tank category with Sigma Grasp and Fortify. Sigma Grasp, an ability where it soaks all incoming damage, adds it to your health, and the only way to get to pierce that ability is with beams or if you, huh, wait a minute, stun him out of it. Oh, wait. In the Sigma mirror, Sigma also has a rock that can stun people out of their abilities. Fortify, which negated, which now negates again, 50% incoming damage and also cannot be headshot. So if you're a Rhine and you get on top of an Orisa Sigma, right? He, the Sigma can rock you, shoot you while running away, grasp and be involved. And God forbid one of your teammates shoots him. He's going to gain health. And Orisa, who can then become tankier than you as a melee tank whilst recharging her shield. Not to mention the good old AoE healing, which I'm going to have a video on, on how supports destroyed Overwatch over their time. AoE healing was never addressed. Brigida was never properly addressed in 6v6. They never touched Inspire, which was the uh, one of the best abilities in the game. Like, no one ever knew it, but it was. Right, and I know this because I played the hero in pro play. Inspire is a crazy broken ability. It has four times the volume of Lucio's heal aura at a higher base stat line. And Baptiste's immortality feeling. So you have all this sustain that never got nerfed properly, right? And there was no way for Dive to consistently beat it or rush. Like, you should be able to bust the bunker. And once you get past those shields, Orisa and Sigma should be at their weakest. Instead, they went to their strongest because of their abilities, right? And that never got changed. You could say the same for GOATS. The balance team never sat down and actually fixed GOATS. And I, I saw this podcast, of the, SB, the group up podcast with SBB, Jake, Custa, and Jaws. And they talked about how tank abilities and tank synergies were just stacked so much that they were oppressive. There was no way to do it in 6v6. But they were mostly referencing open queue. And they, they're right when they say this. In the open queue format, it's very, very difficult to actually be able to balance that. And I'll tip the hat there. I, I, I think that's a fair point, right? If you know, it, But to be fair as well, the reason why GOATS got played was not because of the tank abilities. It was because of the supports. It was because of Brigida, right? It was because of the AoE healing. And there were a few metas where you did see the quad tank comps come out back in the day, but it wasn't hard meta. It didn't become hard meta until the multiple AOE healers that had insanely strong AOE healing and tons of excess utility ended up becoming the hard meta. I think my camera's, oh, there we go, I'm back in focus. So it wasn't the tank synergies that did that. In 6v6, it could have been balanced. Sorry, in, in roll queue 6v6, it could have been balanced, right? Like, no one complained about, you know, double bubble. Like, you know, nobody complained about Ryan Zarya. Right? That was all answerable. Like, you had very fair answers in the game. Like, if there was double bubble, you could pick the Reaper, you could pick the Bastion, you could pick high damage characters, that are at least in a ranked game, and do a pretty good job of answering that, right? In Double Shield, there was no answer to it, because it was literally every big ability in the games, and every type of ability stacked into one, like, it's almost like you made a super Pokemon or something, with, like, the perfect typings and the, every kind of range move, right? And Blizzard never, ever once took away one of those strong points, which I think they should have taken away the sustain abilities because that way bunker comp could still get played. It's just actually possible to bust the bunker and that way the game maintains its three types types of comps being poke, rush, and dive. And there's a healthy balance between the four, the three great nations, whatever, Avatar, Last Airbender stuff you want to say, right? They never tried to fix it. So double shield was easily fixable from a game balance standpoint. They just never did it. They literally never tried to because they were out working on Overwatch 2.
okay? That, that was the main problem of 6v6. Now, here, here's another point that I, that I see a lot, and, and people say, well, Sam, 6v6 is harder, it's more chaotic. It's harder for a new player to learn 6v6 than it is 5v5. And I disagree with that, right? Well, because for one, right now, all of these different characters are spamming MO abilities and stuff, and things are unkillable. I think new players struggle with that a ton, right? But Overwatch's barrier to entry issue was not its formatting. It wasn't 6v6 to 5v5. It's the fact that these people have to learn an entire roster of new characters. And guess what? In Overwatch 2 and 5v5, you still have to do that. You still need to learn all these characters. Where it comes in is at the skill ceiling of the game, which got lowered. And when making a healthy game, you want your skill floor and your skill ceiling to be as far apart as possible so the longevity of play lasts much longer and there's there's just more to learn and more to do. Less is not more, right? Don't let people try to trick you and sell you that less is more because less is not more. One is less than two, right? That's, I'm not saying that, you know, directly like, oh, one is less than two, like in the tank sense. I'm just saying like num numerically, like one is less than two. It's not, one is not more than two, right? Well, maybe I am. Two tanks, more to do, right? Better for the game. More to do, more options, more play styles, more content, more fun things to learn, longer learning curve, better for the game. So what 5v5 did, it didn't lower the barrier to entry to the game. It lowered the ceiling of the game, which isn't good. That's not healthy. Doing less is not more is my big point there. So I, I hear that a lot too. And people still have to learn all these new characters. In fact, now they actually have to learn way more unique things because they the, the role passives in Overwatch 2, though I'm not sure if that's a 5v5 thing that could have happened in 6v6 as well. So we'll, we'll shelf that and not say that's a 5v5 issue. But specific balance patches because CC was too good against one tank, like Sleep Dart having a custom cooldown for tanks, that's more you have to learn. That goes beyond Anything that 6v6 would have had to talk you between tank synergies, it's like, oh, I still know that Zarya is going to bubble somebody that I shouldn't shoot it. I still have to learn that. Oh, the D.Va is just DMing this extra tank instead. Wow, I didn't even think about that. So, like, it's it's all the same stuff that you would have had to learn anyway, except now there's actually a couple custom interactions that you have to learn. And honestly, now it's not even worth You almost learned as well that it's not worth shooting half these tank heroes because they're so tanky individually. There's no chance you can actually kill them in a one-on-one. -on -one. So you actually kind of have to learn more about what characters to shoot when and when you don't. I'll have, to, I'll have to think about that a little bit more. So you guys will have to tell me in the comments to keep me honest down there. But it's certainly not better, right? So, you know, I when, when you take a look at this and break it down, I can't definitively tell you anything that 5v5 did better that 6v6 wouldn't have healthier if 6v6 was actually attended to and balanced properly. Because now you're in the midst of the biggest support creep I've ever seen in the game with the support passive being crazy as well. Countless immortalities, countless invulnerable heroes. And this, you know, wasn't a problem for the game as a whole in 6v6. It was only a problem for four or five of the DLC heroes that never got balanced because they abandoned the game and left to go work on Overwatch 2. So in conclusion, I really do think 6v6 was healthier for the game. I think Overwatch and most of the cast, specifically in the tank role, played better and had more options and were more fun when there was a second tank on the field. I think supports would not have been, had to be buffed nearly as much as they have now, where it's clearly the most dominant, overpowered role in the game that's actively destroying the game and the Q times reflect that with support Q times being exponentially higher than DPS and tank because everybody knows it's the strongest role in the game that just controls the game. And you just feel like a, like as a tank, and I'm going to quote Flats one more time, you're a puppet to your supports when playing the role because the extra power to help you be able to play your role has gone away from having a second tank that you worked in tandem with to now a support who has to, you know, puppet master you around the map and you're counting on them. That is not a more fun experience than when it was way more in your control in 6v6, when you could still tank duo, do all those things. So those are my thoughts. I think that summarizes it pretty well. Please help me flesh out this argument on either side down in the comments. But I, I miss 6v6. I think it was better for the game. And uh, yeah, I ask yourself one last question. I'm going to leave you guys on this note, okay? If the Overwatch executives or the Activision executives 
had not decided to make Overwatch 2 a quote-unquote new game, would you have even thought, or do you think they would have even thought, that 5v5 ever would have been a viable option to take Overwatch 2 PvP 2, or was it made simply to help make it look like a brand new game when it really wasn't? That's the question I leave you with, and that's, that's the question that people should be asking. I think the answer to that is no. I don't think 5v5 would have been on my top 10 things I would have thought to do or done and I think the game is way more one-dimensional and especially at its skill ceiling, just way less fun. So those are my thoughts. I'm not saying 6v6 should come back. That's just what I think. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Peace out.